This lecture is a continued discussion of evaluation of texture categorization. Earlier, we have introduced uh, measures that can be used to compute uh, precision and recall uh, for each category uh, and each document. Now, in this lecture, we're going to um, further examine how to combine the performance on these different categories or different documents. How do we aggregate them? How do we take average? Now you see on the title here, I indicate that uh, it's called a macro average. And this is a con in contrast uh, to micro average that we'll talk more about uh, later. Right. So again, for each category, we can compute the precision recall in F1. So for example, for category C1, we have precision P1, recall R1, and uh, F value F1. And similarly, we can do that for category two, and all the other categories. And once we compute that, and um, we can aggregate them. So for example, we can aggregate all the precision values for all the categories to compute the overall precision. And this is often very useful uh, to summarize what we have seen in the whole data set. And the aggregation can be done in many different ways. Again, as I said, uh, in uh, case when you need to aggregate different uh, values, it's always good to think about what's the best way of doing the aggregation. For example, you can consider arithmetic mean, which is very commonly used, or you can use uh, geometric mean, which would uh, have different behavior. Depending on the way you aggregate, you might get different conclusions in terms of which method works better. So it's important to consider these differences and uh, choosing the the right one or a more suitable one for your task. So the difference, for example, between arithmetic mean and uh, geometric mean is that the arithmetic mean would be dominated by high values, whereas uh, geometric mean would be more affected by low values. And so whether you want to emphasize uh, low values or high values uh, would be a question uh, related to your application. And similar, we can do that for recall and uh, F score. So that's how we can then generate the overall uh, precision recall and uh, F score. Now, um, we can do the same for uh, aggregation over all the documents. Right? So it's, it's exactly the same situation. For each document, we'll compute the precision recall and F. And then after we have completed the computation for all these documents, we're going to aggregate them to generate the overall precision, overall recall, and overall F score. And these are again examining the results from different angles and which one is more useful will depend on your application. In general, it's uh, beneficial to look at the results from all these perspectives. And especially if you compare different methods in different uh, dimensions, it might reveal uh, which method uh, is better in which um, measure or in what situations. And this provides insight for understanding the strengths of a method or weakness, and this provides further insight for improving them. So as I mentioned, uh, there is also micro-averaging in contrast to the macro-averaging that we talked about earlier. In this case, what we do is to pull together all the decisions and then compute the precision and recall. So we can compute the overall precision and recall by um, just counting how many cases are in true positive, how many cases in uh, false positive, etc. Basically computing the values uh, to fill in this contingency table. And then we can compute the precision and recall just once. Now, in contrast, in macro averaging, we're going to do that uh, for each category first and then uh, aggregate over these categories. Or we do that for each document and then aggregate over all the documents. But here we pull them together. Now this would be very similar to the classification accuracy that we introduced uh, earlier. And one problem here, of course, is to treat all the instances, all the decisions equally. And this may not be uh, desirable, but it may be appropriate for some applications, especially if we associate, for example, um, the cost for each um, combination then we can actually compute, for example, weighted classification accuracy, where you associate the different cost or utility for each specific decision. So there could be variations of these methods that would be more useful. But in general, uh, macro average tends to be more informative 
uh, than micro averaging, uh, just because uh, it might reflect the, the need for understanding performance uh, on each category or performance on each document, uh, which are needed in many applications. But uh, macro averaging and um, micro averaging, they, they, they are both very common, and you might see uh, both reported in research papers on texture categorization. Also, sometimes categorization results might actually um, be evaluated from ranking perspective. Now, and this is because categorization results are sometimes or often indeed uh, passed to a human for um, various purposes. For example, it might be passed to humans for further editing. For example, uh, news articles can be tentatively categorized by using a system and then human editors would then correct them. Right? And, or uh, the email messages might be routed to the right person for handling in the help desk. And in such a case, the categorization is to help prioritizing the task uh, for a particular uh, customer service person. Right? So th in this case, uh, the results have to be prioritized. And if the system can give a score to the categorization decision or confidence, then we can use the, uh, the scores to rank these uh, decisions and then evaluate the results as a ranked list, just as uh, in search engine evaluation, where you rank the documents in response to query. So for example, a discovery of spam emails uh, can be evaluated uh, uh, based on ranking emails for the spam category. And this is useful if you want the people to verify whether this is really spam, right? The person would then take the ranked list to check one by one and then uh, verify whether this is indeed a spam. So to reflect the utility for humans in such a task, it's better to evaluate the ranking accuracy. And this is uh, basically similar to search again. And in such a case, often the problem can be better formulated as a ranking problem instead of a categorization problem. So for example, ranking documents in the search engine can also be framed as a binary categorization problem, distinguishing relevant documents that are useful to users from those that are not useful. But typically, we frame this as a ranking problem and we evaluate it as a ranked list. That's because uh, people tend to examine the results sequentially. Uh, so ranking evaluation more reflects the utility from a user's perspective. So to summarize uh, categorization evaluation, uh, first, uh, evaluation is always very important for all these tasks, so get it right. Uh, if you don't get it right, you might get misleading results, and you might be misled to believe one method is better than the other, which is in fact not true, so it's very important to get it right. Uh, measures must also reflect the intended use of the results for a particular application. Uh, for example, in spam filtering and news categorization, the results are used in maybe different ways. So then we would need to consider the difference and design measures appropriately. We generally need to consider how will the results be further processed by a user, and then think from a user's perspective what quality uh, is important, what aspect of quality is important. Uh, sometimes there are trade-offs between multiple aspects like precision and recall, and then so we need to know uh, for this application uh, is high recall more important or high precision is more important. Ideally, we associate a different cost with each different decision error, and this uh, of course has to be designed in an application-specific way. Uh, some commonly used measures for relative comparison of different methods are the following. Uh, classification accuracy is very commonly used for especially balanced uh, um, test set. Precision recall and F scores are commonly reported to characterize the performances in different angles. And there are some also variations like a per document based evaluation, per category evaluation, and then take an average of all of them in different ways, micro versus macro averaging. In general, uh, you want to look at the, the results from multiple perspectives. And for a particular application, some perspectives would be more important than others. But for diagnosis analysis of categorization methods, and it's generally useful to look at the many, as many perspectives as possible uh, to see subtle differences between methods or to see where a method might be weak from which you can obtain insights for improving a method.
Finally, sometimes ranking may be more appropriate. So be careful. Sometimes a categorization task may be better framed as a ranking task. And there are machine learning methods uh, for optimizing ranking measures as well. So here are two suggested readings. Uh, one is uh, some chapters of this book uh, where you can find more discussion about uh, evaluation measures. The second is a paper uh, about the comparison of different uh, approaches to texture categorization. And it also has an excellent discussion of how to evaluate the texture categorization.